Hey guys, Will Patson here again with another Illustrator CC 2014 tutorial. Now today I'm going to show you how to create this vintage sort of looking text with an Illustrator. Now this is really easy for moderate users, uh, but it can be quite difficult for those who don't understand fully. So I'm going to go into quite a lot of detail. But first I want to tell you something about uh, Curious.com. Now if you're wondering how I create my t-shirts or my line of t-shirts, I've made a course on Curious.com that you can go and watch. Um, it's not free, but it's very cheap. And you can go and watch this course, and it will take you step by step through each process that I take of creating T-shirts. So you go check them out. It's really good, um, and it's not on YouTube because uh, it took a lot of time for me to do, and I wanted it to go somewhere great. So the first thing of creating this live text is that we need to go ahead and write it out. So I'm going to press Life. Now Life, this font is actually called Lavenderia and it's available if you just type it in Google and it's free to use, it's all good and it looks really nice and it comes in plenty of weights, it comes in delicate, sturdy, uh, no sorry, delicate, regular and sturdy, so sturdy is right, really uh, uh, big but we're going to go ahead and just go for uh, st uh, delicate, is it? No, regular, sorry. And then I'm going to highlight this so we don't want it to be editable. So I'm going to press Command Shift and O, and that what that does is it converts a live editable text to become just a shape for us to use, so we can customize it more. Now we're going to flick through over here, and you can see in these corner bits here, we can see that they are rounded and they are not um, square or cut off like this one. And this is what we want to do to give it a nice little effect. I'm going to press Z to zoom in on this part over here, and then I'm going to press P which will bring us the pen tool. Now for this we'll need the smart guides turning on so go to view and press smart guides or press command or control U. Awesome. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and find this point up here. Now if you highlight over this it should say anchor point or it will snap you to an anchor point. Click your pen tool there and then drag out at the same angle of the uh, angle of where you're going. So I've got one there. Now the great thing about Illustrator CC 2014 is that we have a preview like the lasso tool in the lasso lasso yeah the lasso tool I can't say that properly uh, within Photoshop so I'm going to go ahead and press down here and I'm going to drag this way this time at the exact angle and this will give us a nice rounded corner uh, which is basically adding on another shape hold command or control and then click away so you don't edit this even more. Let's go over to the eye and repeat the process. So up, away from the object at the same angle, down into the object at the same angle, command, click away, and then drag with your space bar to go wherever you need. And keep repeating the process, it shouldn't take too long. Oops, I've done that wrong. Like so, just to give it a nice rounded corners click away right here right here and we've got that amazing so that's what it is for when you've done that and then the next thing we need to do is we need to merge all these little shapes in with the big shape so we need to go highlight them all then go to your pathfinder options and if you don't have pathfinder open go to window and then go down to pathfinder over here or press shift command or control f9 and that'll bring it out Highlight all this and then press Unite, which is the uh, first one that you come to, and that will unite all the shapes together. The next thing we want to go and do is zoom out by pressing Command or Control minus, and then holding Shift and Alt, we're going to drag this up because we're going to roughen this up a little bit. So we're going to drag it quite far away from the artboard for a second, and we're going to go to Effect, we're going to go to Distort and Transform, and we're going to go to Roughen. Now the important thing to do before this actually is to press command H which will hide the borders away from the selection so it means that you don't know what you've selected so if I selected this you won't be able to tell. You'll see the bounding box uh, outside of it but you won't be able to tell if it's selected on the inside and this is what we want because we don't want to be uh, looking at a blue line uh, when we're roughening it up so press command H, go to effect, distort transform, roughen press preview automatically and you'll see that we've got all this crazy stuff happening so the first thing we need to do is change relative to absolute corner to smooth and we can go from there I'm going to keep the size at 5 but I'm going to uh, drop down the detail a little bit for now 
shift and tab up a few times just to change this a tiny bit. I was using the arrow keys here to get the desired effect. I'm okay with that because it's slightly roughened and we're going to press enter to okay. Then I'm going to press command H and you'll see that it's not expanded to the shape. You can see that the line here isn't fitting within the shape which means that the effect hasn't taken place. We'll zoom out again. So with all these kind of cases we need to go to object and expand. And this will expand the object you can see a load of anchor points being added to this because of the many shapes. We'll drag it back down like so. And um, we've got this. Now, if you type it on Google, vector grunge uh, or vector textures, um, you'll be able to get some of these. And these are called subtle grunge vectors, and these are from thinkdesignblog.com, and they're a freebie. Go and grab them, and they're really good. Um, basically, you want you want to open them up within Illustrator, and you'll get a document. If I can do it right, like so. And basically, what you do is you drag this into the other document, or press command C or control C to copy command V to paste and we've pasted this in here and we're just gonna hold it here we need to prepare uh, the tech uh, the what is it called the shape for texture and the best way to do this is to make sure it's not a group because it won't sort of subtract the same way so we need to press command 8 which will change it into a compound path now when you change anything into a compound path it makes Illustrator think that the group that you're working in is just one path. So whenever you try and use the Pathfinder options, it won't just delete everything apart from the thing you're trying to subtract it from, but it will actually subtract from the whole compound path. Now that seems like a lot to take in, but the more you work within this, you'll see the more easy it gets to understand the more you work with it. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that this shape over here, the shape that we're going to be uh, cutting out of this one, is at the top so we're going to highlight it right click go to arrange and then press bring to front now what this will do is this will mean that we can subtract this shape from this shape um, and that will give us a texture automatically so we're going to go ahead and copy this by pressing alt and dragging it press e to free transform and rotate to give it a bit of diversity we'll do it one more time e rotate all the way around so we don't get any of those hard edges in there there we go we've got something that looks nice around here the next thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these things then we're going to go to our pathfinder options and instead of pressing unite we're going to go to minus front and this will take a minute for your computer to render but you'll see that your texture has been deleted from the actual text which gives you the actual vintage text and that is how you create vintage text within illustrator cc if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm going to be doing some speed designs. I, I know I hated them before, but I found a love for some sort of speed design I want to do. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to donate to me or if you want to go ahead and show your support, go ahead and become a Patreon. You get loads of cool free things like tutorials and that. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.